Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and another episode on my channel of my brand new series called What If F1 Raced At Slash um, Competed At A Former F1 Racetrack. Now um, the series of course um, is, only, is very new, we've done two episodes so far and uh, we did What If F1 uh, you know, Returned To Zanville, which that has actually happened in real life now, Zanville has been confirmed for 2020 and we also did another video which was What If F1 Raced At Assen Instead Of Zanville For The Dutch Grand Prix. Now in today's episode we have what if F1 raced at Jerez instead of Catalonia. So, obviously, as you guys know, there's been a lot of speculation lately about the future of the Spanish Grand Prix, which currently is held at the Circuit de Catalunya. And, um, you know, it's in Barcelona, and Jerez is in a completely different part of Spain, down in the south, and it does have its own F1 history from, you know, from the 80s and the 90s. So I thought to myself, you know what? It's been a while since an F1 car has raced around Jerez. They used to test during pre-season sometimes, but generally speaking, you know, the last cars that raced here were about, on average, a lap about 15 to 20 seconds slower a lap compared to the current F1 2019 cars that we have. Now, the objective of this series is to go around various different past F1 tracks or even tracks that haven't been in F1 before and we're going to do a bit of a comparison to see you know what we're used to uh, with the past F1 car we're going to compare that to the current 2019 car which is so much faster and uh, get an idea of how things have changed over time so you know in this series I want to do tracks like the Indian Grand Prix uh, the Korean Grand Prix uh, Fuji which used to be the Japanese Grand Prix for a couple of years and um Imola, Magni Core, and then any other circuits you guys can, you know, suggest in the comments down below. Uh, Istanbul as well is a very popular one. But, um, yeah, this series is quite, you know, it's got a lot of potential. There's a lot of tracks that we can go to, so I'm looking forward to it. But today, we are here at Jerez, and it's a former testing venue for F1, like I mentioned, and also a former racetrack. So, in this case, we're going to do a little bit of a comparison to see what the lap times were like compared to what they used to be back in the day. With that being said, though, we are here in the McLaren of Carlos Sainz, and uh, we're going to hit the track straight away, and we're going to see what this circuit is like, and hopefully we can have a little bit of fun and let's see how, exactly how fast this car can get around this track because I think it's going to be very, very fast around this circuit. So far, Zanvo and Aston were very similar, about a 1 minute 10-ish lap time. So I think we're going to be in that kind of range this track once again. But without further ado, let's jump into it and let's see how it goes. Okay, so we are going to hit the track. So let's get to it. Obviously, Jerez, I already am familiar with the layout because um, I've raced it before and also because of MotoGP, I'm familiar. But having said that, we need to uh, check it out. It's the first time I've actually tested this track on this version of the game of course we are on a Seto Corsa so um, this is a mod circuit so it might be a little bit different to what I'm used to so we're gonna do some experimenting here also the actual car itself we're gonna see how it feels on this racetrack so far it looks pretty good a little bit bumpy it seems but um, quite accurate looking so far seems like a little bit you know low on frames through some corners but let's take it easy here onto the back straight let me know in the comments down below, guys, as always, what tracks you'd like me to do. You know, I'm always open to ideas. But uh, so far, this track seems pretty decent. Um, I've had a lot worse mod tracks than this. Um, the bumps look a bit different to what I'm used to. But uh, looks like, so far, looks pretty good. Let me know as well, guys, if the camera is something that you're happy with. Or would you like me to move it up a little bit? I mean, personally, I'm quite happy with it like this. But if you guys want to be higher because you can't see properly or whatever, then let me know. But um, let's see, I think this is the chicane layout through here. So yeah, I think this is chicane, there we go. So, oh, a little bit wide into there, but be careful. Got to slow that down a lot more. And then on the power briefly. Right, so that's pretty much a lap of Jerez. Now into the final corner. Very bumpy, i got to say. Up to speed then, let's try and see a decent lap. I'm going to open up the RS on the pit straight. And uh, that's going to be, I'll also do it on the back straight as well. Let's just take it easy for now. Let's try and get an idea of where everything is. Oh, I'll say that. There we go. That's the first spin of the day. That curb. So we'll, not that, we'll mark that one down. That curb is a killer. Let's uh, get the car spun around if we can. And uh, we'll get going again. Okay, so we've got back up to speed now. I'll probably open up DRS on this back straight as well, along with the pit straight. So those would be like the two kind of DRS zones around this circuit. But um, so far, so good. This track, of course... A pretty legendary circuit in F1. I remember the infamous 1997 Grand Prix, of course. You know, everyone knows that one where obviously Schumacher and Villeneuve came together in what was a championship defining moment. And then in the end, both McLarens, who had a rotten um, couple of years up until that point, kind of how they are right now, and the car I'm driving at the minute, they um, came through for a 1 2 finish, which was quite, you know, unexpected at the time. 
but you could tell McLaren were on the cusp of something great and um, it definitely seems like McLaren themselves, oh that's a big one, McLaren themselves have actually had an upturn in fortune in the last year, seems like the changes they've made have actually really worked out but um, anyway, back to the racetrack in itself, of course we've seen lots of other legendary moments, I believe the closest qualifying of all time was at this circuit where three cars were within one thousandth of a second, I think it was also the 97 Grand Prix if I'm not mistaken where Frentz and Villeneuve and Schumacher were all within one thousandth of a second. So this track does have quite a unique F1 history. And um, also a lot of course in the 80s with Senna as well, racing around here. And also Mansell. Let's take it easy. The track is very low grip, I've got to say. I'll do some setup work straight away to make sure I find some confidence. At low speed, there's absolutely no grip at all. However, we have got through that time. So I'm going to go flat through here. Hopefully I can get at least a benchmark lap time on the board. Through the right, onto the back straight. There we go, DRS open. The curbs around here are pretty deadly, so I'm gonna have to try and stealth them if I can. Then we're gonna break at 100 meter board here for the hairpin, the dry sack. Taking it easy there for now. Don't really have the low speed grip. Flat out through this left. Should be flat anyway, there we go. Then down a couple of gears for this very, very long winding left hand, and then into the double right. This one's quite under theory, you've got to be careful here. And you've got to open up the next one. There we go on the power. And I'd love for this to be flat out and be the MotoGP layout, but we've got to slow it down for the chicane here. You can barely see the curbs due to the hands. Up to speed, there we go. This time not spinning the car, taking it easy. One more corner to go. At least now we'll have a benchmark lap time. A little bit wider at the hairpin, but that will do. DRS open. Across the line then and the benchmark is going to be a 121.2 to be fair that's slower than i thought to be honest with you obviously a lot of lap time will come off that oh the back end they're letting go a lot of lap time will come off that but um it's not going to be as fast as i thought it would be i, I genuinely thought this would be like a one minute 10 lap something like that so well, that's a little bit surprising but let's keep going here we're gonna probably go for a little bit more see if we can try and improve before we start doing some setup work and start you know testing the limits there we go, that's much better onto the back straight. Three tenths up already on this lap. I'm going to break a little bit later here into the dry sack this time round. And that was a bit too late there. We're going to have to come in for a late apex. On the power, there we go. Actually, somehow still gain time though. I must have broken really early last time. Turning too late there. Using fifth gear to get the car back underneath me. There's not many brake markables, so it's quite hard to get um, a consistent idea of braking around here. It's very, very hard to uh, guesstimate. They are, they are available, they're just not very visible, so you have to be careful for the chicane here. Try to get that third gear power down. There we go, that's better. And final corner, let's try and get this one not so hot on the brakes. Nope, still quite hot on the brakes. There we go, DRS open. We're seven tenths up, so it's going to be a big improvement already. Shouldn't be an issue to get underneath the 120s. I could probably get into the 120s even without any setup work. I think with the car as it is right now, to be honest. Taking it easy for turn two there. On the power. Flat out, come on, let's go. There it is. Flat out through here, of course. Half a second up already. This track is a workout though, I must admit. We're gonna keep it in sixth this time through the fast right. Get the power down nice and early, there we go. Right then, let's not overdo it out of the dry sack hairpin this time. Okay, that's better. Getting it slowed down, keeping it in third gear seemingly worked a little bit better there. Power down, seven tenths up already. Flat out through there, keeping it much tighter to the apex. Then through here, I'm going to throw the car in a little bit earlier. Using the fifth gear to get the rotation. Nice and easy on fourth gear there. Attack that inside curb on the power. Okay, the conference is starting to really appear now. Into the chicane, I'm a little bit hot. That's going to ruin my line a little bit. Cost me a little bit of time. But still a second, over a second up here. 1.1 up. Hairpin. So bumpy there on entry, which makes me run so wide. On the power, DRS open. There we go. So 1.1 up. So there we go. That's pretty good. A 19.3. I'd say that's pretty good for now. We're now going to go and do some setup work as uh, we've got below the 120s with the default car and now we're going to start really pushing the limits here take the fuel out a little bit and uh, make some wing adjustments and also I'm um, probably going to go with a compound soft front tyres seeing as you know we don't really know what the realistic tyre compound is around this circuit okay so the setup changes have been made I've uh, first of all bolted on a set of ultra soft tyres we've switched from supers to ultras 
fuel has been taken down from 50 litres to 15 litres. Also, I've put a little bit more rear wing for a little bit more stability so I can push a bit more and have a little bit more confidence. And also, I've made a tweak to the brake bias so the brakes are a bit more towards the rear. Hopefully, with those changes, we should be able to push a little bit more here. Also, I'm now going to deploy it in hot lap mode here on the ERS. So, this should be pretty tasty. Of course, we, probably, we tend to bin it on the first time lap as we try to really push a little bit too much. So, we're going to go for an almost flat out pushing lap here. And then we'll really start to push afterwards. Let's try and give it a good go, though. Turn one, a little bit too early in the brakes. That can break a lot later than that. On that curb again, got to be careful with that. Wasn't fully on the power there on the exit. Had to be careful. Oh, back end, letting go there. Tires don't really feel completely at the temperature just yet. I'm actually seventh gear through there. We're still up though, two tenths. Through the fast right, the lighter car. I can get so much more speed on there. DRS open again. Half second up. Now we go down towards the dry sack. Got to be careful with the downshift protection. I can't over downshift on the power. A little bit cautious there, but that will do. Flat out through here quite easily. And then we should be able to carry a lot more speed with the lighter car through the right. Sorry, through the left. There we go. That's much better. A little bit hot into there. Get it slowed down. Using third gear momentarily there to get the rotation. On the power again. Into the chicane. Taking it easy. A little bit aggressive on that opening one, but still that will do. We lost a lot of time through here on the time lap. Remember from before we made the mistake. So there we go. We're a second up. I'm going to get that early turn in if I can. Avoid the bumps on the power. There we go, DRS open. Right, so that's a pretty good lap. Now we're going to push a little bit harder this lap. Oh, there it goes. I need to try and not touch that curb on the exit if I, if I can avoid it. If I get off that, if I, if, if I avoid that curb, I'll be okay. So uh, let's try again. Let's get the car spun around first of all. And uh, we'll go for a little cool off here. And uh, we'll go again next lap. So. Let's try again. I think a 17.8 is what it stands at. I reckon a part of me believes I could get into the 115s if I really hook it up. But it's going to take a lot of effort and I think a really, really good lap to get into the 115s. But I reckon a low 16, maybe like a 16.3, 16.2. That's definitely achievable. So uh, let's get ahead down. Let's try and push towards that lap. All right then. Final corner. Let's take it easy. Set ourselves up for the lap. DRS open, here we go then. Onto the pit straight. Right, let's try and nail this up. Let's push a little bit harder this time. Better, there we go. Stayed off that curb. Using second gear here to get the rotation. Third gear, power down super early that time. We avoid the grass and the gravel. This is a better one already. Let's push into this right hand over we can. A little bit wide. Power down. DRS open, we're still holding on. We just about hold on to that a little bit wide. Dry sack hairpin. A little bit hot, but we'll come back in for a late apex. And a strong exit, there we go. Flat out through here, of course. Let's try and get an early turn in here if we can. Carrying quite a bit of speed there. Let's not overdo it this time into here. We're still a little bit hot, but not as hot as last time. I'm able to get the power down a lot earlier. Chicane. Ah, too early again. Still, though, not too bad. Power down. One more corner to go. Early turn in. Doesn't quite work out. Still wide. I can't seem to get that corner sorted out. Almost used the back end there on the exit, but still pretty much 7 tenths up here. Into the low 17s. Let's try again. On that curve, got to be careful with that. Turn two, keeping it a third gear this time. On the power, super early. That wasn't too bad. Flat out through the left. We're still down on our previous best. Keeping a tight line this time. A little bit wild on the exit, but still. We're a fraction down towards the dry sack. Keeping a tight apex this time. I was up there momentarily, but we've lost it on the exit, of course. Flat out through here. We're a tenth down. I need to try and find some time. That was better through there. That's much better commitment. Let's not overdo it. No, nope, we still overdo it through there. It's the same corners every single time that catch me out. Oh, we're getting loose. We're a little bit hot there. I want to cool off a little bit. 
We're going to call off the rest of that. This chicane is where there's a lot of time to make up. I just can't get the right line. I need to try and make sure I don't touch that inside curb at the first one. Right, let's try again. I'll take back what I said. I don't think a 15 is possible, but uh, a 16 is definitely possible. And I want to get to the 116s. Here we go. Good exit. Let's try one more time here. Come on. Let's give it a go. Oh, that's close. Point to turn two there. We're three tenths down. And we bend it. Yep, we're three tenths down. Right, I'm going to make a few more setup tweaks. I want a little bit more front end. And then we're going to try one more time and see if we can try and get to the 116s. Right, here we go then. I've uh, moved the brake bias further back to 52. Front wing adjustment. I've put a little bit more front end on. And also, I've gone a little bit larger on fuel. Let's try and do this. Based off of the outlap, there is a lot of time to find. So let's try and get into the 116s here. Come on. Straight away, turn one. There we go, we get away with the spin. Turn two, keeping it much tighter this time on the apex. Power down very early through three. Oh, just on the gravel a little bit there, but we're literally neck and neck with the delta. This is where the downforce is going to kick in. Through there, getting the power down so much earlier. We found a tenth of a second through there, fantastic. Down towards the dry sack, let's test out the rear brakes. I can brake a lot later and not lock up, which is what I want on the power. As we now go through the left. Now let's really commit to this one. A little bit wide, but we're going to get the foot down. This time, nice and early on the apex there, through the right. Power down in fourth gear. Much better, six tenths up. Come on. Chicane time. Let's avoid the inside curb. Over that curb a little bit there. Got to be careful. Still, though, we found a lot of time, though. Nine tenths up. Come on, final corner. I'm hot, again, I can't seem to sort that final corner out, which is really annoying me now, still we've improved though, let's try and go for one more, I reckon there's more time in it, I really do, ah, oh, damn, lost the back end there, well it's a 16.5, Maybe my original prediction of a low 16 is possible. That final corner, there's about half a second there alone. So uh, we're going to have a little cool down and we're going to go again. I might, not be, I might not be commentating the actual best lap because I need to concentrate. It's a really challenging circuit, but a low 16 is possible. Oh, that was not the best. Going to keep going though. Two tenths down. Oh, damn it. Yeah, my rear's like they're gone. I think that's the brake bias, to be honest with you. Okay, so some final changes to try and get this lap time. I've uh, just reduced the front wing a little bit, and I've put the brake bias a little bit more to the front. So I had, on the, I had the brake bias on 52, I've put them back to 53. And also the front wing was, I believe, on 31. I put them to 30, so we're going to go a little bit less on the front but hopefully that will give me the more a little bit more stability and i've got to find that balance so basically i can push so we're going to see how it goes just coming towards the end of the water lap here and we're going to give it one last crack and hopefully we can make it happen if it doesn't happen this lap then we're just going to call it a day on that 16.5 but i do believe there is more lap time in there let's get ready for the lap then into the final corner make sure it's in high lap mode and then let's set up for this lap here we go Power down, the RS open. Full beans. Let's give this a good old crack. Car gets loose through there now. I forgot the confidence. I could go flat through there before. Not anymore. Right through the right. Power down, that's pretty good. I'll take that. Or right, just a fraction down then. All we've got to do is match the previous best and then make sure we don't run deep at the final corner. A little bit hot there at the dry sack, but that's okay. We'll get away with that. On the exit, we'll get a good, good traction. And carry that speed all the way through. Keeping the car pinned in. Come on. 
A little bit wide through there, but that's okay. Well, not as wide as it have been. A little bit down here. Into the chicane. Got to make sure we stay off those curbs. That was quite good. I feel like the best I've ever gone through the chicane. We're about the same on lap time, though. Here we go, then. Final corner. Let's not overdo it. On the power. Oh, we just lose the back end. And we're not going to improve. Oh, man. Whew. We're going to call it there. This lap is such a workout. It's such a tense lap. But I'm going to call it there. It's a 16-6, but still, it was good. So, uh, yeah, guys, that is going to be it. And that, that's a lap pretty much of Jerez. If you guys did enjoy that, then uh, drop a like. But I'm going to leave you guys now with a full replay of the lap as usual. So you'll see that right now. And yeah, pretty much that is going to be it, guys. If you think you can do better than me, then by all means. I mean, I don't do too much setup work. I just literally play around with the aero, the brakes, and the ERS deployment, and also the fuel. I don't really go into that like, suspension or anything like that because I'm not really too sure what I'm doing. So, yeah, guys, if you think you can do better than me, there's a link down below to the mod, which is a pay mod. You have to pay for this car. It's only three euros, though. It's not that expensive. And it's, trust me, it's totally worth the money. You have so much fun with it. Um, there's also a link to the actual 2019 skins in the description down below. And there will also, um, if I can find a link, I'll try and do a link for the circuit as well for her F. But most of my tracks do come from Race Department anyway. So literally go on a set of course of mods on Race Department and uh, check out the mods for yourself, guys. But uh, yeah, with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed the video with it. Then drop a like, like I said. And uh, subscribe if you are new. Leave your comments down below in terms of what tracks you'd like to see me do next. As um, I've got quite a few tracks to get through and I'd be curious to see what you guys want to see next. And um, yeah guys, that's going to be it for this video and hopefully you did enjoy it and I'll see you guys in the next one very, very soon. But until then guys, it's goodbye from me and uh, yeah guys, check out these two videos on your screen and I'll see you in my next one very soon. But until then, it's goodbye.